Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. This week's episode is my Pulp Fest 2014 FarmerCon 9 convention report. The convention took place from August 7th to the 10th at the Hyatt Regency in Columbus, Ohio. I will be covering what transpired there and the purchases I made. I apologize for this report taking so long to post, but I've been battling a little cold following my return from the con. I arrived in Columbus a little before 11 a.m. on Thursday, August the 7th. I met up with some farmer con friends who were already there, and we traveled to the nearby Acorn Bookstore, as well as got some lunch. I ended up buying way more than I thought I would at the used bookstore due to their great selection and reasonable prices. Upon returning to the Hyatt, I checked into my room and went to the Pulp Fest dealer room for early registration, which included picking up the new issue of the Pulpster, followed by a round of early bird shopping. This was the first year Pulp Fest did early bird shopping on Thursday, and it looked to be a big success for them. I ate dinner that night with some farmer con folks at Max and Irma's, which is located just across the street from the Hyatt. I attended panels on Thursday night. These included a nice tribute to the late author and pulp collector, Frank M. Robinson. Another great panel focused on Frank Muncy's Famous Fantastic Mysteries, which is a science fiction reprint pulp. A bonus panel on pulp artist H. Winfield Scott, led by David Saunders, was added to the show as well. He was joined by Scott's granddaughter, Lisa Scott, in remembering the artist. Rick Lay also gave a great and very comprehensive talk on the Avenger, who was celebrating his Diamond Jubilee. I ended the night with a first for me, taking part in an actual panel with Paul Spiteri and Christopher Paul Carey on the FarmerCon 9 panel. We discussed Farmer's blending of pulp and science fiction in his work. Meteor House Press also made three announcements that night The fans will no doubt be pumped over. The first announcement was that Meteor House will be publishing a book written by Jim Beard and Dwayne Spurlock titled Airship Hunters. The second was that Win Scott Eckert will be finishing Philip Jose Farmer's The Monster on Hold the fourth entry into the Secrets of the Nine universe, featuring Doc Caliban. It was also announced that Christopher Paul Carey will be writing two novellas set in ancient Opar, based on Farmer's Notes. The titles are Hadun, King of Opar, and The Blood of Ancient Opar. Up until the trip to the Acorn Bookshop, the plan was that Chris would be writing three new novellas set in ancient Kor, focusing on Hadon's son, Kor. However, upon leaving the Acorn Bookshop earlier that day, where many ERB books were purchased, the word came in that ERB Incorporated did not have a problem with Meteor House using Ancient Opar and the Ancient Law in future projects. It was very cool being there for the historic event. I recorded Chris reading from Chapter 1 of Hadon, King of Opar, as part of the new Fictioneer segment at Pulp Fest, so be sure to keep an eye out for that recording in the coming days. I ended the night with the Farmer Con crew in the lounge area of the Hyatt. I believe we all headed up for bed around 1.30 a.m. or thereabouts. The dealer's room opened up at 10 a.m. on Friday morning. 
I went around and got the lay of the land. I stopped by the Meteor House booth and picked up two books I had already pre-ordered before, before the show. The new printing of The Evil in Pemberley House by Philip Pose Farmer and Winscott Eckert and Phileas Fogg in the War of Shadows by Josh Reynolds, which is a follow-up to Farmer's The Other Log of Phileas Fogg. On basically every day of the convention, I ate lunch at the subway located in the hotel food court. The food court has several places to eat, and it's a very convenient place to grab some lunch during the con. At 2.30 on Friday, I attended Christopher Paul Carey's New Fictioneer reading. He read from The Goddess Equation, a story set in Farmer's Father John Carmody and Detective Raspold series that was recently published in the worlds of Philip Jose Farmer, Volume 4, from Meteor House Press. He also read from Chapter 1 of Hadon, King of Opar. That night was the Farmer Con dinner. We ate at a small lounge down the street from the Hyatt, and it was a lot of fun. I got back to the hotel to catch some of the panel on 1939. Science Fiction's Boom Year. Following that was a panel featuring an overview of startling stories, and it was quite good. This was followed by Michael Croteau and Arthur Sippo, highlighting Philip Jose Farmer's early science fiction work. A lot of Farmer's early work appeared in the pulp magazines, which I wasn't aware of until recently. Following the panel, I headed into the lounge and hung out with the farmer card and crowd for the rest of the night. On Saturday morning, I headed to the dealer room and shopped around some more. At 3 p.m., I attended Frank Schuldiner's new fictioneer reading. He read from his new Thunder Jim Wade novella, The Adventures of Thunder Jim Wade, Volume 2, The Horror of Hyperborea, from Prose Productions and The Blood of Frankenstein, from Tales of the Shadow Men 10, Esprit de Corps, published by Black Coat Press. That evening was Pulp Fest dinner at Buca di Beppo. It was located across the street from the Hyatt, toward the two sports arenas in the arena district. The food was quite good, and the dinner was a lot of fun. Following the dinner, I attended the Pulp Fest business meeting, which is always a lot of fun, too. It's kind of like open mic night at a comedy club, with plenty of good-natured ribbing between the audience and the committee. The Muncie Award presentation followed, with last year's winner, Garen Roberts, presenting this year's award to J. Randolph Cox to a standing ovation. Following the Muncie Award presentation was Barry Trailer receiving the Rusty Hevelin Service Award. For the rest of the night, I hung out in the lounge with the rest of the farmer con folks until late into the morning. I left early Sunday morning for home. Pulp Fest 2014 was enjoyable as always. It remains a great shopping show with a lot of interesting panels. I'm a pulp fan and reader more than a collector, so I gravitate more towards paperback reprints of the pulp stories, as well as an occasional fanzine or two, rather than collecting the classic pulps themselves. You won't find a better selection of shopping and programming anywhere else in regards to the pulps. The location at the Hyatt Regency in downtown Columbus is a big plus, too. Many restaurants and shops are within walking distance of the hotel, as well as being inside the hotel itself. I highly recommend all Pulp fans to attend Pulp Fest at least once to see what it's all about. If you are interested in the programming and some nice pictures from the con, 
I highly recommend you check out Bill Lampkin's coverage on the pulp.net. I will put a link to it in the show notes. Bill recorded a ton of panels and had a day-to-day report from the con. I ran into Bill over the weekend and got to talk with him a little bit about the pulps. It was great meeting him in person after admiring his work with the pulp.net online for so long. The pulp.net is the first pulp site I found online when I first got into the pulps. Also, Art Sippo from the Book Cave podcast was recording panels and new fictioneer readings as well, so be sure to keep an eye out on the Book Caves page for those too. I'll put a link to it in the show notes. Next up, I will be going over the purchases I made from the show. These are the purchases I made Thursday at the Acorn Bookshop. Twice in Time is a novel by Manly Wade Wellman. He was a pulp author, but he also published paperback works as well later in his career after the pulps kind of died out. Uh, That issue of High Adventure is actually a facsimile reprint of... Tarzan of the Apes by Edgar Rice Burroughs uh, from the All Story issue. Uh, this is the original pulp text, so it has some cool things in there, like the like uh, having tigers in Africa, uh, like what was in the original story. Uh, on the right is Edgar Rice Burroughs, The Man Who Created Tarzan by Irwin Porges. Um, This was recommended to me by both Christopher Paul Carey and Rick Lay while we were in the bookstore. So I figured that was pretty high recommendation coming from those two. So I picked it up. Uh, On the bottom left is Philip Jose Farmer's Jesus on Mars. Um, I picked that up. It was one I was missing in my farmer collection and I wanted to read that. Uh, Same with The Stone God Awakens. Dark is the Sun, I have that in audiobook, but I don't have a paperback version of it. So I decided to pick that up. Bunduki by J.T. Edson is a book I've heard a lot about, and it sounds pretty interesting. Um, Edson got permission from the Edgar Rice Burroughs estate to use the Tarzan mythology. And he also got permission from Philip Jose Farmer to use the Wool Newton genealogy in this series. So I was quite interested to, in reading this first book of the Bunduki series. These are some fanzines I bought at the convention. Um, that Locus issue on the left was actually on the freebie table. There was quite a few Locus magazines that were on the freebie table. I picked this up because it had the Isaac Asimov obituary and appreciations in it. In the middle is this year's issue of The Pulpster. Um, You get it for free when you register and come to Pulp Fest. There's a lot of good articles in it this year, as always. On the right is the triple issue of Blood and Thunder. Um, It's from Morania Press. Edited by Ed Hulse. Um, I've been really looking forward to checking that out. I plan on reading through that shortly. The bottom three are issues of Golden Perils. It's a fanzine that Howard Hopkins put out. And I purchased them off his wife, Dominique Hopkins, who came to Pulp Fest and FarmerCon this year. So I look forward to checking those three out as well. On the top left is a Weird Tales collection that was edited by Robert Block. From what I could tell, it contains 32 stories. A story from each year the magazine was published. I picked it up because it has a story called The Love Dead in it, which was ghostwritten by H.P. Lovecraft. And I haven't been able to find that anywhere else for a reasonable price. The two in the middle are Robert E. Howard books um, 
from what I hear, the last Celt is kind of outdated, but it was for it was a pretty good price, and I liked the cover, so I decided to pick it up to check it out. And the same with that Skull Face collection on the right. Uh, Brad McMorn, Legion from the Shadows by Carl Edward R Wagner is on the far right. And I've heard nothing but good things about Carl Edward Wagner's writing, so I decided to pick that up to give that a shot. The Goddess of Ganymede by Michael Resnick is on the middle left. I picked up the first book in the Ganymede series a few years ago, so I wanted to pick this one up as well. After enjoying Asimov's Black Widower's story and the further adventures of Batman, I decided to pick up the two Black Widower's paperbacks. And on the bottom, I found these. I was really excited to find these for a good price. Uh... The Solar Pawns Adventures by August Duraleth. I, from what I hear, they're some of the best Holmes pastiches out there. And they're pretty good from what I hear just online from several people. I was happy to find The Magic Labyrinth and The Gods of Riverworld by Philip Jose Farmer to round out my Riverworld collection I've been putting together. The Purple Book contains Farmer's Riders of the Purple Wage, uh, which is an award-winning science fiction story he wrote. I already talked about Phileas Fogg and the War of Shadows and the Evil in Pemberley House. Uh, both were both debuted at the show from Meteor House Press. I pre-ordered both of them and picked them up at the show. I actually just finished reading War of Shadows, and I really enjoyed it. I really like the evil in Pemberley House, too. Um, this one has some new bonus features that were not in my hardcover copy from Subterranean Press. So I was, I'm really looking forward to perusing through those to check those out. I think a lot of the bonus materials in the book were originally only in the limited edition chapbook from Subterranean Press. And in this new paperback printing, those are included, as well as a new introduction, I believe. On the bottom are some Weird Heroes volumes. I tried to get as many as I could at the show. Um, some of these have Philip Jose Farmer stories in them. Some do not. Um... But I decided, heck, Weird Heroes, I hear nothing but good things about it, so I want to try to collect all of those paperbacks. And I think I got off to a pretty good start at the con. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter. And facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.